thank you for having me. My name is Joe. I'm an autistic man with autistic son. Yeah. 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 That's all right. It takes a while for the vaccine to kick in. But... <laughs> diagnosed and everything, so if you heckle me, then technically that is a hate crime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, so I can perform to not autistic people, I'm not like not autistic. My brother's not autistic, he's, he's very severely not autistic. <laughs> he's got all the symptoms, he, he loves making eye contact, uh, he, he's really into loud, sudden noises, he, uh, uh, shit at maths. <laughs> That last one's not fair, that's not true. It's not true that not autistic people are shit at maths. A lot of you can be really good at maths. With, with the right support, you can achieve it. <laughs> <laughs> yourself, so. He's incredible, my brother. You know, he's not autistic, but he's done... And it's not his fault he's not autistic. Really. <laughs> my parents are very supportive of both of us. They loved him and cared for him. They, they gave him the MMR vaccine. That's supposed to help, but... Uh, <laughs> still not autistic, and... Uh, <laughs> He's achieved incredible things for an autistic person. He went to university, which I think is amazing for a not autistic person. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, he has to have like, a specialist course that was adapted to meet his needs. Okay? It's called Film and Media Studies. <laughs> I'm really jealous of the people that believe the conspiracy theories. Right? I mean, I think they're very comforting. I wish that I believed them. I wish that I believed that our government had a plan. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff they're worried about is never as bad as the stuff that's really happening. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The people in the conspiracies, they'll tell you, uh, did you know the reason we've got the vaccine is because the NHS is being run by devil worshipping Zionist pedophiles. <laughs> and I hear that and I go, oh, thank God for that. It used to be Matt Hancock, didn't it? <laughs> well, I say we give these new guys a chance. <laughs> Don't like eye contact? I think it's weird. I think it's weird that you people do that. Think about what eye contact is. We've all got two jelly balls that we hold inside of our skulls. And we walk around sucking in light into our jelly balls at all times. And when you want to be polite to someone, you're supposed to point your jelly balls towards their jelly balls. <laughs> suck all the light off of their jelly balls. They return the favour, point their jelly balls back at your jelly balls. They suck the light off of your jelly balls whilst you're sucking the light off of their jelly balls in a mutual jelly ball sucking thing. I find that weirdly intimate <laughs> when you just met someone to immediately suck on their jelly balls. I used to get in trouble at school and a science teacher used to say to me, Joe, you have to make eye contact with me, otherwise I don't know you're listening to me. What kind of biology teacher are you? <laughs> so you listen with their eyes. She was told that if you have an intrusive anxious thought that something bad's going to happen, if you sing that anxious thought out loud to the tune of a silly song, that makes the thought seem silly and it diffuses some of the power of that anxious thought. I'm not saying this like cures her anxiety, but genuinely, there's a little tip to do. She found that genuinely helpful. Spray anxiety to you, but genuinely helpful. Bye bye. Thank you. What has meant for me is that occasionally I'll be woken up in the morning by my wife singing, Joe's gonna die in a terrorist attack. <laughs> interesting my wife is bisexual that's incredible isn't it think about that she's bisexual she what does that mean that means she could have married a woman but she chose this <laughs> it's like being someone who could afford to shop at waitrose but but chooses to eat out of bins <laughs> um i didn't appreciate how cool and weird i was when i was a child when i was eight years old we were in assembly at school where a man brought a tortoise in and that was the assembly we learned all about the tortoise we learned about what they eat we learned about hibernation we learned they can live to almost 100 years old it's incredible right and at the end of the assembly the man who owned the tortoise told us that the tortoise didn't have a name she was almost 100 years old but she didn't have a name and it was decided that there'd be a competition in the school to name the tortoise and the winner of that competition that would become her name i was eight years old i thought about what to name the tortoise and i suggested that we name her 
Padnam Infant School, which was the name of the school that we went to. And my reasoning was this, right? She hasn't had a particularly exciting life. She lives in a man's house in the suburb of Portsmouth, but one day she went to Padden Infant School, possibly the best day of her life. Every time she hears her name, be a lovely reminder of the wonderful day she had at Paddling from school. Aww. I mean, that's beautiful. I mean, it's a wonderful thing to name at all. It's even on that last day, when she's put down to hibernate for the last time, she knows that she may never wake up again from that cold winter. She would hear her name, Good Night Paddling from school, and she'd think to herself, Oh, yes. That was a good day. I've lived a good day. I think that's beautiful. I was weird. It's a weird thing to call a child. But actually, I think it's quite beautiful and poetic, and I'm proud to have been different, proud to have been weird and different as an eight-year-old to have thought differently. Anyway, long story short, I came second to some cunt who wrote Shelley, and I... <laughs> still angry about that. <laughs> Shelley. <laughs> right, it's hack, isn't it? Huh? You name a tortoise after a romantic poet, it makes no sense at all. <laughs> 